so I am waiting in the car uh, for my last physical therapy session, uh, which I was signed up for to see if it would help with my nonstop fuzzy once I had a headache. Um, and it hasn't really seemed to have an effect on that, but at least I'm learning better posture and stuff like that. So, you know, at least that'll help me more in the long run. Um, so, a uh, couple of things. Uh, one is I got my second Pfizer shot on Monday, so two days ago. Um, it, uh, it was fine. Um, the first shot that I got on, like, April something, 20th or something like that, um, my arm was sore for several days. Um, I had, like, a very brief feeling of dizziness while I was waiting, you know, the 15 minutes, but then it passed. Other than that, I didn't feel anything. This one I felt even less. Um, I don't even think it's... Yeah, there's like no redness or anything um, for like the day after or whatever. You know, if you press straight on the injection side, it was a little bit sore. So, you know, laying in bed was a little like, ow. But other than that, nothing. Um, I didn't even feel dizzy, no fever or anything like that. Um, I have talked to a couple of people since then, both the nurse and this lady I was talking to at the grocery store and stuff. And apparently the Moderna one is the one that a lot of people are having, you know, more intense reactions to, um, with the second one and intense just being like feeling shitty, you know, feeling like they have the flu for a day. Um, I'm actually almost worried that I didn't have a reaction at all because it's like, did I get a dud? Like, how would you even know, you know, if you got a, a vaccine that, that wasn't working or something for you, which, you know, just yet again, uh, reinforces why we need everyone to get vaccinated so that, you know, we can get that herd immunity thing going. But because Americans are dumb and selfish, that's never going to happen. Um, regarding the kids, they just announced that one of the, it, it's not the Pfizer, it's not the, um, Moderna and it's not the Johnson and Johnson. It's another one, biotech something. Um, which is not the mRNA version. This one is the old style where they inact they inactivate uh, a strain of the virus. So it is the virus, but it's a dead person part of the virus, which theoretically, you know, can't become alive again. Um, but I just I prefer the idea of the mRNA where it's literally just the the defense spike part of of the whatever they're called. It's not the actual virus. But anyway, um, they just announced that they're going to start. Well, they they cleared the way to start. Uh, trials, clinical trials for 2 to like 14 or something like that. And since the CDC already uh, gave permission to give it to as young as 12, if this 2 to 14 one works out, then we might honestly be able to vaccinate even the kids um, by our October trip, um, which, you know, I was not expecting to happen. I just figured, you know, have them wear masks all the time, except when we're at the beach and just, unless it's crowded and just hope for the best. Um, again, we all had it in February anyway. And I think the kids must've had it when we had it. Cause you know, it was when they were only asking like, Hey, do you have, have you been to China? It's like, if you haven't been to China, then yeah, I'll have it. Anyway. Um, so that's good news. Um, I still have the headache. Uh, it's not too bad at this exact moment, but all week it's been pretty bad. Um, and I do think that eye strain while looking at the computer or whatever is part of it. Uh, so at least so far, you know, the, the shot hasn't cleared away that headache, um, which I've been hoping because, you know, there are people saying that, uh, like they did a very unofficial poll of like 2000 Facebook group people in this Facebook group that was for long haul long haul, long haul COVID sufferers like me who still have symptoms, you know, weeks to months to over a year since having COVID. Um, and like 60 something percent of them said that their, their symptoms got at least somewhat or entirely better after getting their second shot, but it's only been two days. So, you know, maybe in a couple of weeks it'll have more of an effect, but I don't know if it's the shot or if it's just the, the regular waxing and waning of, of COVID long, long haul COVID symptoms, but um, my heart hasn't felt like it was hammering, um, since I got that. Um, I think I said it in my, my last vlog, but, uh, I've been having a repeat of, of some of the long haul symptoms I had back, um, in earlier part of last year, you know, like within a couple months of, of having COVID where my heart would just start hammering <laughs> and just like being really fast and really intense. And I started having that again. And, the speed wasn't even the big thing. It was mostly feeling this bum, bum, bum feeling or whatever. 
And it's very distracting and kind of alarming because, like, I'd literally be, like, playing a video game or something, you know, not stressful at all. And all of a sudden I'd hear my or feel my heart going boom, boom, boom. And it's just the. But that hasn't happened since I got the shot. So it would be great if, you know, that's the case. Because as much as I hate the headache and there's always going to be a part of me that's like, is it a tumor? You know, I've had two MRIs and all this other stuff and I haven't found anything. And it's not getting worse. It was getting better since August and it seems like it's sort of plateaued. But who knows, maybe, you know, a year from now I'll feel better. I don't know, whatever. But the heart thing is scary because it feels like they're going to have a heart attack. Um, last piece I'm going to say in this vlog and then I got to get inside for my physical therapy is uh, I officially bought the tickets for the Amtrak trip in October and I'm nervous about it because it was $5,000 um, because we have to get two bedrooms because there's three adults and two kids and it's a 30 hour trip um, and uh, yeah it's a big expenditure but you know it's part of the vacation experience and hey I don't have to <laughs> ride an airplane and hyperventilate the whole time. Um, but you know, and I mean, it's mostly being paid for with what's left of my mom's life insurance. And I figure, you know, she wasted so many hundreds of thousands over the course of my dad and my life on fucking get rich quick seminar, you know, $60,000 for a weekend seminar type bullshit that uh, we, we can spend a little bit of it on, on like a big family trip to go down to San Diego in October. Um, but yeah, um, hopefully that'll be fun. Hopefully I can get my dad to actually come with us because we still have to work on his agoraphobia and his psychosomatic agoraphobia where the idea of leaving the house makes him feel ill. So he goes, I can't leave the house because I feel ill. We're working on it. We're working on it. Um, and I put the word out to some of my old San Diego friends, like not really expecting anyone to even reply. But to my surprise, like three or four of them were like, yeah, sure, let's meet up. Now they might just be saying that it still won't happen. But the fact that they didn't like just straight up ignore me or, you know, even worse, be like, I don't like you. I don't want to see you. Um, it's nice, you know. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to that. Hoping that, you know, we don't have another wave or something like that preventing us from being able to go. Um, who knows? Americans are stupid and selfish and short-sighted. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, I gotta go. So I'll, I'll talk about more in the next vlog. <laughs>